Hi guys, in the previous lecture that is the lecture number 29, we have studied about the load commutation that is class A commutation, okay. And now in this lecture we will start current commutation. So before starting current commutation, I told you that you should watch lecture number 6, there I derived the IL of T that is equal to ICP sin omega naught T where ICP is Vs under root C by L. This is the discharging LC circuit current equation and omega naught is equal to 1 by under root LC. So I told you, you should go through the lecture number 6, then only proceed to this lecture that is the current computation. Okay. Now we know that to turn off the SCR, we can turn on the SCR by supplying gate current, right? But to turn off the SCR, there is two method. First method is either you can make the voltage polarity across this SCR negative means this is anode this is cathode if I will make the voltage polarity ac across this SCR like this suppose I, I am connecting the capacitor such that the voltage across capacitor is like this then this th SCR will be in turn of a state because it will go into the reverse blocking mode you can see that negative is connected with anode and positive is connected with cathode so this will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off SCR will turn off this is one method second method is to turn off the SCR let us say I am supplying the gate current means it is conducting and let us say the current is flowing like this I naught okay now to turn off this SCR what I can do this if I will supply the current let us say this is current I1 if I will supply the current I1 equal to I naught in reverse direction then overall the current flowing in this SCR will be zero means anode current will become zero that is less than the holding current in this way we can turn off the SCR. So two method of turning of the SCR first one is the make the voltage polarity across the SCR such that it will go into the reverse blocking mode and second flow the current opposite to the initial current I naught such that I1 is equal to I0 then only it will turn off means overall the current will become zero and it will be turned off got it so these two technique we will apply in force commutation now let us start the class B commutation that is the current commutation okay so let us move to the first slide this is the circuit diagram of current commutation the first one this is the circuit diagram of current commutation here main thyristor is this TM is the main thyristor and TA is the auxiliary thyristor which helps in commutation. So let us understand one by one. There are three modes in this type of commutation circuit. Mode one is from here to here. This is the mode one. Okay. Let us say the time taken is T1 and mode two is from here to here. So mode two time is T2 let us say okay and I am sub assuming that I0 is constant here load current I0 is constant this is the assumption first assumption is I0 is constant means the load is highly inductive okay second assumption is the capacitor is charged up to Vs Vc of T at T is equal to 0 is equal to supply voltage the capacitor is charged up to Vs and the polarity of voltage across capacitor initially is like this from plus to minus these are the second assumption and third assumption is Tm is on for T less than 0 means this thyristor main thyristor is conducting for T less than 0 and capacitor is charged up to supply voltage and the polarity of supply voltage is like this from plus to minus these three are the assumption now here I naught is constant you can see in the waveform this is I naught okay this I naught is constant and it is ripple free so this circuit is operating in three modes mode 1 starts from 0 to T1 mode 2 starts for T2 duration and mode 3 starts from here to here so we will see one by one each mode so let us start with the mode 1 this is the mode 1 so what I am doing in mode 1 in mode 1 TA thyristor I am triggering at T is equal to 0 you can see that TA is on at T is equal to 0. See the waveform. TA is on at T is equal to 0. So I am triggering this thyristor TA at T is equal to 0. Then what will happen? The voltage across capacitor is like this. So the moment when you will trigger this thyristor TA means it will be sorted. TA will be sorted like this. This is mode 1. 
and this capacitor this capacitor will discharge like this and the current flowing in this circuit lc circuit will be like this now see here capacitor current the direction the actual direction is from left to right it is flowing like this but i have assumed that capacitor current is flowing like this this is the assumption i have assumed that ic is flowing from left to right but when you will trigger this thyristor ta then the current will flow opposite to this ic then what will be the equation of ic of t the ic of t will be minus of icp sin omega not t this i have explained you in lecture number 6 how this equation is coming i have assumed ic anti clockwise direction but in actual case the uh, ic current will the cap, the current flowing in this discharging lc circuit will be clockwise that's why i can write ic this is ic of t so ic of t can be written as minus icp sin omega not t right this is discharging lc circuit so when ta will be on then i will get the equation of ic of t is equal to minus icp sin omega t means capacitor will deliver energy to this inductor and again this inductor will deliver energy to this capacitor and this capacitor is charged opposite to the initial voltage polarity now this capacitor will charge after mode 1 like this from plus to minus initially capacitor will deliver power to this inductor again when this inductor is behaving like a current source then this inductor will deliver its energy to capacitor means the capacitor will charge like this from plus to minus opposite to the initial polarity got it so see here when mode 1 will start means at t is equal to 0 this thyristor ta will be on so equation of ict i will get that is equal to icp sin omega not t that can be written as bs under root c by l sin omega not t this will be in minus so icp i will get something like this this is the capacitor current icp sin omega not t it will be like this okay at the same time the capacitor voltage will decrease means the capacitor is delivering energy to this inductor so capacitor voltage will, will decrease so capacitor voltage will decrease like this it will reach to zero like this and again inductor will deliver its energy to the capacitor and the polarity of capacitor the voltage across uh, capacitor will be like this from plus to minus so capacitor will discharge first and again charge with opposite polarity so capacitor the voltage across capacitor will discharge like this and it will again charge with reverse polarity up to minus of vs this is the minus of vs got it so when thyristor ta will be triggered then the capacitor current equation will be icp sin omega not t like this it will be like this sinusoidal from 0 to pi and at the same time the capacitor voltage will discharge and again it will charge with reverse polarity from minus to plus like this means at uh, at the end of mode 1 what will be the voltage across capacitor the voltage across capacitor will be minus vs this is the ending part of mode 1 mode 1 will be from 0 to t1 only okay so t1 duration for t1 duration the capacitor current will be like this and, and the capacitor voltage will be drop from plus vs to minus vs and it will reach to minus vs got it now if i will ask you what is the maximum current flowing in auxiliary thyristor ta what is the maximum current flowing in auxiliary thyristor ta so what will be the ita max the maximum current is flowing through this thyristor auxiliary thyristor will be icp only we have seen the current equation icp that is equal to vs under root c by l i will take mode because thyristor won't allow the reverse current i am assuming ic current is flowing like this that's why the current i am getting negative but in actual scenario the current is flowing in clockwise direction okay so ita max will come out to be icp that is equal to vs under root c by l this point you have to remember in mode 1 the maximum current flowing in auxiliary thyristor will be icp that is equal to vs under root c by l okay now see the mode 2 see here at the end of mode 1 what is the current flowing in the capacitor the current flowing in the capacitor the mode 1 starts from 0 to pi so at the end of mode 1 the current flowing across capacitor will be zero and what is the voltage drop across this 
capacitor the voltage drop across this capacitor will be minus Vs that we have seen in the previous slide like this this will be minus Vs means the polarity of voltage across capacitor will be from minus to plus initially it was from plus to minus but after mode 1 uh, the voltage polarity across capacitor will be from minus to plus like this now see in mode 2 what is happening in mode 2 this diode will go into the forward bias see the voltage drop across capacitor will be from minus to plus so here diode is connected okay so this diode will be in forward bias because of this voltage polarity across the capacitor okay so see here the anode is connected with plus and cathode this high stress conducting so cathode is connected with minus so this diode starts conducting in mode 2 and it will be sorted okay so the moment when this diode will start conducting this capacitor will again discharge from l as well as this diode as well as this thyristor so you can see that the current the current across this thyristor because of this capacitor is from right to left that is opposite to the main current okay so in mode 2 what is happening again this capacitor will discharge from l diode and this scr main scr in anti clockwise direction and again this capacitor will discharge and it will give the energy to this inductor so what will be the capacitor current ic of t in second mode ic of t in second mode will be icp sin omega t and here icp sin omega t will be positive because initially the ic current polarity i have taken like this and the current is also flowing like this that is anti clockwise direction so ic of t i will get icp sin omega t so current equation after pi will follow the sinusoidal behavior like this and it will flow opposite to the im that is the main current means it is opposing the main current so it is nullifying the main current okay and we can see that at omega t is equal to pi the main current is i naught okay so the moment this ic of t will be equal to i naught that is equal to main current okay so the moment when ic of t that is icp sin omega t will be equal to main current then this overall the current flowing in this thyristor overall will be equal to zero and this thyristor will go into the off state so we can see that after pi the current the capacitor current will increase sinusoidal as well as the main current will decrease because the capacitor current is flowing opposite to the main current okay so it will decrease the overall current flowing in thyristor tm that is the main thyristor okay so the moment when ict will be equal to i naught or i can say that i m then at that time the thyristor tm will be off because anode current at that time will be zero so you can see that capacitor current is increasing sinusoidally like this and main current i m is decreasing like this and the moment when i m will be equal to zero i m will be equal to zero that is equal to anode current only now so the moment when i m will be zero this thyristor will be in off state here anode current is zero and capacitor voltage is minus vr so it will go into the off state are you getting me so in this way this commutating element main uh, auxiliary thyristor capacitor inductor and diode this, this is the circuit now this is the commutative commutation circuit so this commutation circuit will force the SCR to go into the off state by supplying the current opposite to the main current such that the anode current across the thyristor will become zero in this way mode 2 works so at the end of mode 2 if i will ask you what is the voltage across this capacitor the voltage across this capacitor will be minus vr and at the end of mode 2 what will be the main thyristor current the main thyristor current will be zero you can see that this is the ending of mode 2 na? this is mode 2 so at the end of mode 2 the main current will be zero and at the end of mode 2 if i will ask you what is the current the capacitor current the capacitor current will be maximum current that is equal to i naught now i define the mode 1 time this time as t1 and mode 2 time as t2 now suppose i will ask you what is the voltage across this capacitor at the end of mode 2 so voltage across this capacitor at the end of mode 2 is nothing but minus vr only 
you can see that at the end of mod 2 the voltage drop across this capacitor will be minus vr so how can i find vc of t see vc of t we have already found in the lecture number 6 the vc of t is nothing but vs cos omega t for discharging lc circuit vc of t is equal to vs cos omega t you can see this equation in lecture number c okay so at the end of mode 2 what is the total time the at the end of mode 2 i can say that this is the total time okay and this is pi and this is t2 right so i can write total time like pi plus omega t2 okay this is the total time at this point okay so i can write like this vs cos pi plus omega t2 will be equal to minus vr i can write like this see this is vs cos cosine wave right so vs cos pi plus omega t2 this is pi and this is omega t2 in degree so pi plus omega t2 will give the capacitor voltage across this point pi plus omega t2 so at pi plus omega t2 the capacitor voltage is minus vr so i can write like this that will be equal to vs cos pi plus omega t2 is equal to minus vr so vr will come out to be minus vs cos pi plus omega t2 okay now in order to find the t2 t2 is the time this is the t2 na so t2 i can write icp sin omega t2 is equal to i naught see the current capacitor current increases from 0 to i naught in the range t2 and this capacitor current equation is icp sin omega t2 is equal to i naught in the range t2 so from this equation we can find omega t2 omega t2 will come out to be sin inverse i naught upon icp where icp is the vs under root c by l that we have discussed in lecture number six so t2 will come out to be one upon omega that is under root lc sin inverse i naught upon icp we can find t2 from this equation now replace omega t2 from vr so vr will come out to be c cos pi plus theta is minus cos theta so it will be plus vs cos omega t2 omega t2 i can write sin inverse i naught upon icp remember this voltage what they will ask you they will ask you at the end of mode 2 what will be the voltage drop across the capacitor so the voltage drop across capacitor will be vs cos sin inverse i naught upon icp and what will be the time t2 the time t2 will be 1 by omega sin inverse i naught upon icp and omega can be written like under root lc sin inverse i naught upon icp these two point you have to keep in mind at the end of mode 2 what is the voltage across capacitor and what is the current flowing in capacitor so at the end of mode 2 the current flowing in capacitor will be equal to i naught and the voltage drop across capacitor will be equal to minus vr so it will come out to be vs cos sin inverse i naught upon icp so at the end of mode 2 this main thyristor is off see here at the end of mode 2 what is the current flowing in uh, main thyristor the current flowing in main thyristor will be zero and the voltage across the main thyristor is minus vr so overall this main thyristor will be in off state and in mode 3 what will happen this supply voltage will again charge the capacitor up to vs this supply voltage will again charge the capacitor up to vs and after that it will be open circuited so you can see that after mode 2 main thyristor will be in off tm is off and this capacitor voltage will again charge up to vs this is the plus vs okay by supply voltage and after that it will be in off state got it similarly the capacitor current you will get that is equal to i naught from this this is the i naught right so here the capacitor current you will get that is equal to i naught that is the end of mode 3 so if i'll have to explain the all the three modes then how will i explain see in mode 1 what i am doing i am triggering this thyristor ta i am triggering this thyristor at ta at t is equal to 0 so this capacitor will discharge again charge the inductor now this inductor will uh, discharge and it will charge the capacitor and the polarity of voltage across capacitor at the end of mode 1 will be from minus to plus like this and the waveform i will get 
like this. The capacitor current will be minus ICP sin omega naught T up to pi and capacitor voltage will be cosine wave that will decay like this Vs cos omega naught T and it will again charge to minus Vs and the polarity will be like this. That is the end of mode 1. Now what is happening in mode 2? In mode 2, the voltage drop across this capacitor is from plus to minus. It is like this. So this auxiliary thyristor will go into the off state because of this reverse voltage drop across this capacitor. Okay. So this thyristor, main, uh, auxiliary thyristor will be off at the end of mode 1. And after that, this diode will get active because the volt polarity of voltage drop across this capacitor is from minus to plus. So this diode will be going to the forward bias and it will be sorted. So now the current, the capacitor current will flow opposite to the main thyristor current. Initially the main thyristor current is flowing I0. So the moment when this capacitor current will be equal to I0, then the overall the current across this thyristor will be 0, anode current will be 0. So when ICP sin omega T is equal to I0, then this Overall, the current across this main thyristor will be zero, anode current will be zero, or you can say that main current, that main thyristor current will be zero, and at that time the thyristor will go into the off state because at that time the anode current is zero as well as the voltage drop across this main SCR is negative. It is from like this minus to plus that is equal to VR minus VR. Got it? This is the mode two. And what is happening in mode three? In mode three, main thyristor is already in off state so supply voltage is charging the capacitor like normal and the current the capacitor current will be equal to i naught that we have seen in mode 3 okay so in mode 3 the capacitor will again charge from minus vr to plus vs and the polarity will be like this okay and it will be open circuit that is the end of mode 3 now if i'll ask you what is the circuit turn of time so what is the circuit turn of time? Tur circuit turn of time is defined as the time for which this main thyristor, main SCR is in reverse bias. Okay. So for how much time this main thyristor will be in reverse bias? See, this is main thyristor, right? And this thyristor is getting off when the voltage drop across this capacitor is minus VR like this. Okay. So circuit turn of time is defined as the time for which main thyristor is in reverse bias. So this thyristor will be in reverse bias till this capacitor voltage drop from minus Vr to 0. When this capacitor voltage drop from minus Vr to 0, till then only this main thyristor, the voltage drop across the main thyristor will be negative and circuit turn of time is defined as the time for which this thyristor is in reverse bias. For how much time this thyristor will be in reverse bias? When the voltage drop across this capacitor will be negative, for that time the thyristor, main thyristor will be in reverse bias. Is it fine? So main thyristor is reverse bias from minus Vr to 0. After that, the voltage drop across this capacitor will be from plus to minus. In this case, the thyristor will go into the forward blocking mode, not the forward conducting mode. The thyristor will go into the forward blocking mode when the voltage polarity of across this capacitor will be from plus to minus okay so forward we will not include the circuit turn of time in forward blocking mode we will see only the reverse blocking mode so reverse blocking mode i will get when the voltage across capacitor will be negative means minus vr to zero is this fine so i am getting the voltage drop across this capacitor from minus vr to zero so this is the circuit turn of time got it this is the TCM. So how will I find TCM? We know that Vc is equal to 1 upon C integration of I dt. Okay. Now integrate both sides from minus Vr. When this capacitor voltage will go from minus Vr to 0, then I will get the circuit turn of time 0 to TCM. So circuit turn of time will come out to be T Vr upon I0. Okay. This IT is nothing but I0. See here, this IT is equal to I0. So TCM will come out to be C Vr upon I0 where Vr we have already found Vr is equal to voltage drop across the capacitor at the end of mode 2. Okay. So let us summarize the formula that we have derived. First formula is what is the current flowing in the main thyristor, peak current flowing in the main thyristor. See the peak current flowing in the main thyristor is nothing but the load current only. We have seen the peak current here in mode 1 it is I0. Okay. In mode 2, 
it is less than I naught because capacitor current will decrease the main current. So, it will be less than I naught. So, peak current across the main thyristor will be I naught that is equal to load current. Okay. Now, what will be the ITA peak? We have already found ITA peak. This is the main auxiliary thyristor current. Na? So, peak current across the auxiliary thyristor will be ICP. We have already found that is equal to Vs under root C by L. So, peak current across auxiliary thyristor will be ICP that is equal to Vs under root C by L. Okay. What is the conduction time of TA? See in the waveform. Thyristor TA is on at T is equal to 0 and it is getting off at T is equal to T1. So, conduction time of auxiliary thyristor will be from here to here. This is 0 and this is T1. See here, TA is on at T is equal to 0 and TA is getting off at T is equal to T1. So, conduction time of thyristor TA will be equal to T1. Okay. So, we can find T1. T1 is this much only and it is at pi. So, I can write omega T1 is equal to pi. So, T1 will come out to be pi by omega that is equal to pi under root LC. So, T1 will be equal to pi under root LC. Got it? Now, the fourth point is time required to turn off main thyristor after TA is on. See, what they are asking? They are asking time required to turn off the main thyristor after TA is on. TA is on at T is equal to 0. We can see by graph TA is on at T is equal to 0 and main thyristor is getting off here. This is the turn off time. Total turn off time of main thyristor will be this much after TA is on. So, after TA is on, TA is on at T is equal to 0. What is the total time taken by main thyristor to turn off that is equal to T1 plus T2. This is T1, we have already discussed this is T1 and this is T2. So, overall total time will be T1 plus T2 and we have already found T1 as well as T2. T2 what we are getting? We are getting T2 is equal to under root LC sin inverse I naught upon ICP. We have already found this equation. Okay. So, time required to turn off Tm after Ta is on that is equal to T1 plus T2. Now, the fifth point is minimum time required to turn off Tm after Ta is on. So, what will be the minimum time required to turn off the main thyristor after Ta is on? See, Ta is on at T is equal to 0. Okay. And this is the minimum time required after Ta is on. This is the minimum time that is equal to T1 only. How? Let us say load current is very small. Let us say I0 is very small. So, when I naught will be very small means I naught will be somehow like this. Okay. So, minimum time after mode 1 it will decrease like this and this will be the minimum time required to turn off the main thyristor after Ta is on. This is the minimum time. So, when load current will be very small then we can say that minimum time required to turn off the Tm after Ta is on that is equal to T1 only. See after T1 it is the main thyristor current is decreasing quickly. So, we can say that minimum time required to turn off the main thyristor that is equal to T1 when I0 will be very small. This is the condition. Okay. So, when I0 will be very small, then minimum time required uh, to turn off Tm after Ta is on that is equal to T1 that is equal to pi under root LC. Okay. Six point is capacitor voltage at the end of second mode. We have already found at the end of second mode, this is the end of second mode, right? So, at the end of second mode, what is the voltage drop across capacitor? The voltage drop across capacitor is minus Vr. So, at the end of second mode, the voltage drop across capacitor will be Vr that is equal to minus Vs cos sin inverse I0 upon ICP that we have already found. Now, the seventh point is circuit turn off time of Tm. So, we have already found that is equal to CVR upon I know circuit turn off time is defined the time for which thyristor is in reverse bias. So, thyristor is in reverse bias when the voltage drop across capacitor will be negative. So, voltage drop across capacitor will be negative from minus VR to 0. So, we can find the circuit turn off time like this that is equal to CVR upon I naught. So, these all formula you have to keep in mind because 
most of the question can be framed from this formula only. Till now, none of the question has been asked from the class B commutation that is the current commutation in gate exam. But still, you have to remember this formula. For derivation, how this formula is coming, we have already derived in this lecture. But you should remember this formula, how these formula are coming. Okay. So that's all about this lecture. In the next lecture, we will start class C computation that is the impulse computation. Okay. So if you guys understood the concept, then please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For doubt solving, you can join our Facebook group. Thanks for watching this video.